Sound Words, Christian Magazine, Volumes 11 to 20, republished by Irving Risch, host of Down to Earth but Heavenly Minded Podcast. Practical Reflections from the Life of Abraham. Genesis Chapter 23. In Genesis Chapter 23 we have the intimation of the death of Sarah, the vessel of promise. Sarah's death typifies the passing, for the time, of Israel and the promises in relation to the earth so as to make way for the heavenly blessings and relationships according to the wondrous purposes of the Father concerning the Son and all that he has counseled for him. The Son has gone through death, and taken up a heavenly position, in consequence of which the Bride is being formed here upon earth, united by indissoluble links of undying affection to her heavenly Bridegroom. Nourished and cherished by him as members of his body, we are of his flesh, and of his bones, for it was from the side of the last Adam, so to speak when he lay in the deep sleep of death, that the church is being built. How blessed it is to consider that all our relationships with the Father and the Son have been established on the risen side of death, beyond any and every possibility of failure or breakdown, eternal, unchangeable, inviolate and enduring. What fact is more wonderful than this there is a risen man in the glory of God? How blessed it is to behold the risen Son of God as he is presented to us in John chapter 20, announcing to Mary the establishment of that wonderful relationship with the Father. I ascend to my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary had been led by the unerring instinct of affection to the place where the body of her beloved Lord had been laid. But her night of weeping was dispelled by the radiant beams of that glorious resurrection morning as she heard the voice of him, who had emerged triumphant from death's dark domain announcing to her the establishment of a relationship surpassingly great in character and extent, and founded on his resurrection. He had laid down his life and taken it again, as he had said in John chapter 10 verse 17, but he had taken it upon new and heavenly conditions. Suited to that place of surpassing glory and excellence he was so soon to occupy at the Father's right hand. Mary imagined that he had come back, like Lazarus, on the old footing, but she had to learn that, as risen from the dead, all her links with him now must be of a heavenly character. This blessed one, in spite of that perfect life, which was ever marked by every moral beauty and perfection, was not restored to continue life in this world, but, thrice blessed it is to consider. He is still man though in the glory, resurrection for him did not involve discarding the manhood he had assumed in incarnation. No element of corruption lurked in the holy body prepared for him, even as had been written of old, Thou wilt not leave my soul in Hades, neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt make known to me the path of life. But even in the contemplation of these astounding truths, let us not be limited in our apprehension, or in our conception of them. For this glorious one was not only raised from the dead, but was set down by God at his own right hand in the heavenly places. There, he is far above all the great spiritual heavenly beings, and the fame of his name transcends that of all the great of earth or heaven, either of the present age or of the great age that is yet to come. This glorified man is not only above them all, but is far above them. He is head and chief over every one of them, and further, he is head to his body, the church, the fullness of him who fills all in all. How excellent the thought that! In the risen and exalted man, Christ Jesus, we see the pledge and beginning of those bright and blessed scenes, where sin can never come, whose sight our longing spirit weans from earth where yet we roam. In spirit we are there already, associated with our true Isaac who, as the last Adam, has breathed into us his own spirit. And we await that wonderful moment when the saints as a mighty army shall stand forth in glory, our bodies of humiliation transformed, into conformity to his body of glory according to the working of the power which he has even to subdue all things to himself.